So now we can actually try to find out a way to test Einstein's model of the photoelectric effect, which we just talked about before. And uh, this can be done by many ways, but one of the main ways that the IB wants you to learn about is uh, known as Millikan's experiment. Millikan did a lot of other things, but uh, this is one of the experiments that he did. Um, and it's something to do with stopping potential. So first, maybe I'll try to draw you roughly what's going on. Well, first of all, you're going to need some sort of uh, source of photons in order to do his experiment. And you're going to need some sort of tube where you actually have some material. So maybe this tube right here will be a vacuum. And in this, you're going to have to have, um, you know, one end of a charge plate here and another end of a charge plate here. And those will be connected in a circuit. So let's just say I'm, I'm actually going to put a battery here for a reason that may not be completely obvious right now, but I will. So if I connect these ends here, and this right here is the metal uh, that we're interested in. Okay, so right here, this is the surface of the metal right here. That's the metal. And coming in here, of course, these are the photons. In other words, the light. So they're going to be shining in. Um, often you have to actually have a way for the photons to actually shine through. So sometimes they want you to know that this may be a quartz uh, window or something like that. You basically have, a, have to have a way for the photons to shine in. This is really what's happening. So what's going on with the stopping potential is that, um, well, I can actually explain it a little bit better maybe by showing you a video. Hold on just a second, let me open it up. Okay, so this is back to our little uh, animation here, again by PHET, which is at University of Colorado. You can just Google PHET and you can see this as one of their uh, demos called the photoelectric effect. So here, let's just say again, I've got uh, light of a certain uh, wavelength, let's say. And you notice again that the wavelength isn't the right amount in order for it to make a photoelectric effect to happen. So just to review again, remember this is wavelength though, and we're normally talking about frequency. And the rule says that if the frequency is high enough, then photoelectric effect will happen. So let's take a look at that. So as I make the wavelength lower, which makes the frequency higher, we'll see if we can get some electrons to start jumping out. So let's just see if we can get some. All right, so we've got some coming out. So right now I've got uh, some electrons coming out. And if we look, so now we've got some, they're able to jump across. Now I haven't actually done anything with the battery yet. So this is just regular old boring photoelectric effect happening. However, the important thing is that what we can do here, if we look at uh, this over here, the main idea behind it, uh, let me go to another slide here. So the electrons will jump across the gap uh, because of a potential difference. Okay, so that right there, remember what potential difference means. That's really like saying voltage, but the proper term is always a potential difference. But anytime you see the word potential difference in your head, you should be thinking about a voltage. So that's something about V. And by varying the potential, we can stop the electrons. That's the idea behind it. So again, let's take a look here. So by increasing this voltage, so let's just say I actually apply a voltage across these two plates here. One will become a cathode and an anode but the nomenclature isn't so important. So as I add a little bit of voltage, let's just say, let's look at what happens. It's actually enough to take all the electrons. Did you notice already? It's enough to make the electrons go out and then start coming back. So if you could fine tune this to find the, the minimum voltage that you need to make them stop, then that would be your stopping potential as we would call it. Okay. So, this one here, for example, didn't need much stop, uh, much voltage to make them stop. However, if I had uh, something like a uh, much higher frequency, in other words, higher energy, these ones would be coming out a lot faster. Do you notice those now, those fly right to the end. Well, a lot of them do at least. And if I want to stop those ones, I would need more voltage in order to do it. In other words, more potential. So my stopping potential will be bigger. So what I want to talk to you about now is actually the concept of uh, this second one here. By varying the potential, you can stop the electrons. So that means when you've actually stopped the electrons, remember we talked about uh, this equation here before here. Um, let's see here. I need to find it. I think it's from uh, electricity. So that would be here. This VE equals half MV squared. That's the um, energy given to a, an electron. So if we write that down, so VE equals half MV squared, that tells us, remember, this little V is the, vo uh, the speed of the electrons. 
This is the voltage or the potential difference. And if we look at this then, this VE, that tells us something about maximum kinetic energy of these electrons. So because of that, we have our V times E equals our E max. That's the key thing to remember. However, they like to write it with a little S. Let's put that little subscript there. So V E S equals, uh, sorry, V S with a little E like this equals E max. So again, what's V S? That's your stopping potential. So that's the voltage you need in order to stop these electrons. And what's stopping potential measured in? Of course, it's in volts. E, of course, is the charge of an electron. And we can look up what E is as well on our uh, equation sheet in case you forgot it. You can always go back to your equation sheet and take a look at your little numbers here. And you'll see that E is elementary charge, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay, so that's equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And our E max, of course, is the max kinetic energy of the electrons. And that would be measured in, again, joules or electron volts. So either of these units, either joules or electron volts are uh, good to do this. So I want to go back uh, two slides here and look at this uh, equation that we had looked at here. HF equaled phi plus E max. I'm going to write it again. I just want to show you here how these are related. So we've got HF is equal to phi plus E max. That was from before. Now I'm going to write the new equation. And I just want to show you at least that uh, how similar these are. So this is HF. And it turns out um, that means we can actually, well, we need to look at the equation from our equation sheet. Let me look at this. I need the right page. There it is. So we have HF equals HF0 plus EV. So let's look at that. So HF equals HF0 plus EV. HF, HF0 plus E times V. So this is our new equation. This is the one we really need from this. I just want to point out uh, this fact right here. Hold on, I'm just going to move this. Let me for computers when you can do that. If I was writing this by hand, it would be difficult to do. So from this uh, equation here, you can notice, of course, these are all units of energy. And remember, this was your work function. But it turns out all of these are equivalent. In other words, this HF from the top is the same thing as that HF there. That's the same. And if you want to know what your work function is, it turns out your work function is HF0. So we can talk about that. To, well, well, we know that energy is HF, but it turns out the, um, you had a minimum threshold frequency um, and below which you didn't have any photoelectric effect happening. And above it, you do. So it turns out if you ever want to know what the work function is, look at the equation below it on your equation sheet. It tells you that your work function is H times your threshold frequency. And if you want to know the maximum kinetic energy of your electrons that are being emitted, well, they're related to this if you need it. So this right here tells you about the stopping potential. This EV, that's this right here that's happening, this V stopping potential. So just to recap, if you want to talk about how to test Einstein's model, you can mention Millikan's experiment where you can actually apply a voltage in order to stop the photoelectrons. Right? That's what we were doing over here. We were applying a voltage to stop these electrons from going all the way across. And whatever that minimum voltage is that you need, that's going to be this V here. And here's how the equations are related. HF equals phi plus E max, and you have HF equals HF zero plus EV. And again, those are all found on your equation sheet. And I've basically just walked you through the first three equations on your equation sheet. So again, the idea is just to show you how to use this stuff so that on an exam, uh, you know where to find different things.